So a couple weeks ago, we had a pretty big leak in our RV and we made a video about it. You might have seen it. It took us about a week to get dried out from that and I've just been so frustrated that that happened. It's not the first leak that we've had in an RV or a home. This video is going to apply to regular old homes or anything that could possibly have a leak in its water system as well because I thought, why can't we have devices, we have so many smart devices these days that would detect the leak and turn off the water before damage occurred. And it turns out it's totally doable. There's already systems out there that you can buy that do this and they use basically wireless leak detectors and a valve to turn off the water. But they tend to be really expensive and they don't have enough control for what I needed to do in my system. So I built my own and today I'm going to show you how I did that and how you can save a lot of money doing it as well. All right, so the basics of a leak detection water shutoff system is a, a leak detector. Now there's lots and lots of different options for leak detectors out there, but uh, you're gonna want a battery. I mean, it doesn't have to be battery based. Uh, being hardwired would mean you wouldn't have to change batteries, but you're gonna want a leak detector with a battery that lasts a long time and can be placed pretty much anywhere that a leak might occur. And this is the unit that I chose to use for my system. You can get really basic versions of this that are really inexpensive and when they detect a leak they'll alarm. Just like that. It beeps and that's my valve. And they will alert that water is leaking somewhere. And manual shut off, you've detected the leak, you can go shut the water off or figure out what's going on very quickly. Even just a cheap version of this is a great option. These are a little bit more expensive though. This one runs about $20 a piece and it has a wireless radio in it that can communicate to give it status and then you can do something with that status. And in my case, I'm gonna be turning off the water with it. This leak detector is from Third Reality and it has a Zigbee based radio in it, which is a very low powered radio that allows the battery to last a very long time. I've heard these can last up to three years, even with their wireless transmission. The Zigbee radio does require a special hub to be able to get that data, but Zigbee hubs aren't that complicated or expensive either. I'll explain that in a little bit, but the other side of this is a simple valve controller. And this unit only cost me about $30. And what this unit is, is it's just a simple motor that it's designed to sit on top of a water valve, just like that. And then it can trigger, it can turn it basically based on a trigger. So I can just turn this and it's just gonna turn that valve. And right now it's opening it, of course, but it could close it as well. So we simply put these anywhere we expect to have a leak. We need to transmit all of their information to a central hub. And then once that hub receives it, transmit another signal to uh, the valve that tells the valve to turn. Now, this is a 12 volt unit, so this is gonna be hardwired, and this operates directly on uh, Wi-Fi, or the, yeah, the wireless networks, the, the Wi-Fi network. And this is uh, what's called a matter device. Now, the Internet of Things has been uh, an evolving space for quite a while, and matter is what I would recommend if you get a Wi-Fi based uh, device. Uh, smart light bulbs, smart light switches. Uh, matter is a uh, on the thread protocol, and it's it's really cleaned up how we can integrate these devices, and it seems to work really well. So um, this one was super easy to integrate. And that's what I would recommend for a, a Wi-Fi based device. But again, you don't wanna have these based on Wi-Fi because it would eat the battery really fast. So we're operating on Zigbee, which is a very low powered radio, closer to Bluetooth level, and these will last a very long time. But how are we actually doing anything with this data? So you could use some off the shelf home assistant software, Apple HomeKit, Google Home, uh, Alexa has one. All of these have some capability to do some automations. If this, then that. 
but they have a big problem in that they require the internet to work. And we're in an RV, and I can't always guarantee that we're going to have the internet. And even in a home, you don't want to rely on internet to have leak protection. So I've decided to use something called Home Assistant, which is a local, we, we call it a server, it technically is a server, but it's a, a local computer that sits in the home and basically takes all the data from all of the smart devices into it and it acts as the central hub. And this operates on the wireless networks locally and doesn't require the internet to work at all. It's also open source, and we can basically program it to do whatever we want. I found it to be a pretty simple operating system to work with, but if you're not familiar with computers, Home Assistant's probably going to be a little bit challenging. I'm not going to go into how to actually set those up and use them. There's plenty of YouTubers out there, and uh, you can always talk to the AI about how to do this. If you want a local home control, I definitely recommend Home Assistant. It operates on a server and you simply access it through any web browser. It also has a really great app that you can use on your phone. I'll high level explain what mine looks like. We are in an RV, so I wanted a really low powered small device. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 5 that is wired directly to the uh, batteries in this RV. So we also don't need shore power and uh, it connects to a TP-Link router that I've got wired to the batteries as well. So the whole system doesn't need the internet internet and doesn't even need shore power to operate. If the power goes out, this is still going to work just fine. Now for these to communicate with that, I do need a Zigbee radio hub. And I think I'm using a Sonoff uh, Zigbee radio hub, which basically has a, a USB that just plugs right into my Raspberry Pi 5. Super easy to set those up. Uh, you can get Zigbee hubs that work without um, a, uh, a computer, but uh, again, the, the home assistant is a great way to go for controlling these. The basics of setting them up is that you just turn them on, you turn the Zigbee system on to look for them, and then it just integrates the device into the system. Really pretty simple. Then, once you've got them integrated into whatever system you're using, in my case, home assistant, you have to write a little piece of script or an automation, we call it, that says, when any of these have detected moisture, then turn off the valve. And it's really as simple as that. It took me just a few minutes to get it set up. I've got the sensor, I'm gonna trigger it with my finger here, and almost instantly, the valve starts to go. I mean, it's, it's very reliable. It has worked every single time I've tested it. And again, no internet, all local, and I'm even gonna know if the batteries are dying on these. That's another beautiful thing about the, the Home Assistant is I, I built a dashboard that shows me the status of all of the leak sensors. So I, I already use Home Assistant for my primary control of my power system in the RV. So now I have a water display and it just shows all of the sensors, whether they're dry and the battery status right on the page. And then it also gives me control over the valve. I can turn this on and off right here. And then I also have just an alert that will pop up and tell me which has alarmed, what time, uh, and which one alarmed. And then it will turn the water off. And then you can also reset it here. But there's one more thing I had to do because we are in an RV, which is also turn off the water pump. If the leak occurs in our wet bay, it could be from the water pump. So I wanted to be able to turn that off as well. Now you could simply do this by using a 12 volt relay module. Uh, again, Zigbee is a really great way to do it, but you could use um, Matter in a Wi-Fi based device and just literally interrupt the power to the water pump. Boom, simple and add it to uh, any control system. In my case, we already have a relay controlling the water pump. So I decided to use a Shelly Uni uh, device, which has a, a, a dry contact on it and allowed me to basically trigger my existing relay. And then I can detect whether it's on or off simply by reading the power system. So it actually reads 12 volts at the pump and can tell me whether it's on or off. That's again, kind of outside the scope of, of this system, but 
again, having that central server and being able to automate things to your own liking, I can basically say, when this detects water, turn off the water pump and turn off the valve. Boom, no more water in the RV. Because it's so straightforward and we can go to our primary display or even pull up the app and look at it, we can instantly know what happened and why the water's off and reset it. Now there are manual overrides. You can pull this little pin here and then you can, oh, I triggered it. And then you can manually turn the valve and tell it to turn it off. Big thing that you have to think about is where the water valve is. If you are in a house that is on a well, or in our case, a RV that has a water pump and a pressure tank, a well is gonna have a pressure tank and some RVs are gonna have pressure tanks. Not all of them do, but uh, some RVs have pressure tanks, which means that it can build up pressure and then it, it releases that. So the pump doesn't have to run constantly. In our case, our pressure tank is very small compared to a house because we're in an RV, but it still stores up a couple gallons of water. And if we shut the water off at the main of our city water connection, then we could still pour a couple gallons of water into the space once a leak has been detected. And I don't want that. So what I did is I modified some of our water system to move the valve to the other side of the water pressure tank on the, on the house side of the water pressure tank. So when the water is turned off now, we're gonna lose pressure immediately. This then gets installed on that valve and the system operates as you've seen here. And that's it, simple as that. Well, I know for a lot of you, it's gonna sound like this is really complicated and it, it is gonna be a little bit challenging if you try to implement this, but it's none of it is outside of most people's capability to figure out if you want to implement a home assistant system with um, these. Just kind of struggle through it Getting the uh, getting the home assistant set up is even pretty easy. I definitely recommend going the Raspberry Pi way if you choose to do that for your, your first one. I've also set them up on computers and in containers. Uh, those are really good ways to do it if you want advanced capabilities or to run alongside other things on your server. But running the home assistant operating system on a Raspberry Pi has fulfilled everything that I need to do in this RV. And it has really changed the game on what I can do because I now have a central hub that allows me to do simple if then things like if this happens, then that. I control my generator with it. I control my solar power system and my inverter, uh, how power flows. Uh, Victron has a really great system, but even that was so limiting for how much I wanted to control my system. So now it's all done through Home Assistant and it works flawlessly. It's been awesome how much control I have over my smart devices. And it's just gonna get better from here. Now, another cool thing we can do with local control, and I'm guessing we're gonna start seeing this with the uh, the Googles and the Amazons of the world as well, is uh, do custom uh, voice AI LLMs, uh, large language models built right into the system. Imagine that your home basically remembers everything that's happened and you can converse with it directly. I've already implemented a uh, an LLM directly into my system. Home Assistant actually has a uh, a paid for subscription that can run an LLM on the back end, or you can call ChatGPT or anything else. But you can uh, converse with it directly. So I could just set one of these off, and it alarmed and showed me that it alarmed. Now I can uh, I could say. Um, I could talk to my AI agent and say, hey Spud, why is the water off? The water is off because a leak was detected under the sink. Check the leak, then re-enable in your water control panel. Isn't that cool? So it's actually kind of aware of uh, the surroundings and what's going on. I'm gonna try one more here to show you what we can do with it. It's kind of annoying. You actually can turn the uh, you can turn the, the, the alarm off on these. It's one of the options that you have with, uh, with these wireless units, which is kind of cool. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just pull the battery on this unit. There we go. 
Okay, now it's showing that it's offline. I've also got the system set to shut down if it detects one of the system, one of the units to go offline. So I can go, hey Spud, why is the water system offline? The dishwasher leak detector is offline. Check the battery before re-enabling the water system. Would you like me to remind you tomorrow if the sensor is not back online? Kind of thing sometimes do. Um, yeah, uh, remind me tomorrow um, if uh, if the sensor's not online. Actually, uh, turn off the water uh, tomorrow at this time if, uh, if I haven't replaced the battery and uh, it's not back online. You got it. In 24 hours, the water will be turned off again, unless the leak sensor is back online. <laughs> I'm not going to recommend that you implement uh, implement it the way I did. It's a really kind of convoluted. I'm using 11 labs for the, the fun voice, but it is pretty cool the kind of stuff that you can do all locally. And I do think we're going to start to see some more AI computational computers that we're going to be able to bring a lot of these kind of things, these LLMs, home uh, locally. Uh, and run them. It's really easy to run a lot of these LLMs already on a, a decently powerful unit, but I think it's just going to get uh, better and better. So there you go. Uh, just something kind of fun that I thought I'd share uh, and really useful. I think um, we're probably not going to see any more uh, serious leaks in this RV again. If you know anything about RVs, you know that a leak isn't if it is when uh, we shake these things going down the road and stuff just uh, wears out. And even in a home, I think the uh, the washing machine is one of the most common causes of uh, floods and damage in homes because the lines go bad or they, you know, they leak eventually. So these kind of things could be uh, really, really handy. And now with uh, modern systems, there's no reason that we can't uh, inexpensively and pretty simply turn off the water when a leak is detected. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining me here and uh, we'll see y'all down the road. Stay safe.